Hi everyone, welcome to another Claim Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Claim Machine and also of the new and upcoming World Vegan Bodybuilding Championships. Stay tuned for that. We'll have more information as we get everything solidified. First, a disclaimer, this video is for uh, informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Well, Popeye was right. You know, sometimes the intuitive things that we uh, learn growing up as kids and watching on our televisions actually turned out to be right. Mother does know best and Popeye was right. <laughs> so um, let's uh, dig into this study. It's a pretty cool study. It's, it's very well done. It's a two-arm uh, trial. Um, so it is a gold standard RCT, uh, the, the, the best type of study. The only problem I found with it was that it had kind of a small group, only 51 uh, subjects. Um, but it was, it was a very, it was a nicely controlled study. And the other thing that was not so great is it didn't result in big results, but it was only a 12 week study. So smaller group, 12 week study, 51 people. Um, let's take a look at what they found though. So some of the interesting things that was pulled out in the study, some of it was referenced from previous research, but what they were getting to was the fact that, and I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the study up here in the links so that you guys can see it in the comments. You can check out the links too as well and read the study for yourself in the comments section. So everyone can see it and then I'll pull it up on the screen too as well so that uh, if you're watching this on YouTube at a later time, you can see it. All right, let's get it up on the screen here. So this is the study, a 12 week uh, randomized double blind placebo controlled clinical trial evaluating the effect of supplementation with a spinach extract on skeletal muscle fitness in adults older than 50. Now, it's interesting that they did adults older than 50 because generally that's when uh, sarcopenia kind of hits full stride. Sarcopenia is age-related muscle decline or muscle loss. Um, I don't like that phrase or description of sarcopenia as an age-related because I personally don't believe it's as much age-related. You're still going to lose some muscle a little bit of muscle as you age and that can be a whole lot of other contributing factors which i'll get into maybe in a different video but look i'm in my 60th year of life and i actually have more muscle on me now than i was when i was 30. it's because of my training techniques my nutritional um advantages and many of the amazing herbs that i've do, that i've found that uh, we're using now in our products to really help me get into optimal nutritional states. Once you have optimal nutritional states, the healing, the repairing, the recovery, and the muscle protein synthesis, as you're gonna find out from this spinach, can actually greatly increase and compensate for any losses. And as a matter of fact, these subjects, both men and women, were over 50 and yet still gained muscle. They actually ended up at the 12 weeks, of just 12 weeks of just doing spinach extract. Really nothing else different. They, they did uh, put them on a, um, a, uh, a moderate uh, exercise program, one hour, three times a, a week. So pretty moderate. Um, and remember, these were over 50 and people... So there's going to be a, a little bit of muscle gain, but this was actually increases over what the placebo. So both groups actually worked out and the ones with the spinach extract gained more muscle, gained more strength and lost more fat than those doing the exercise, but not consuming the spinach extract. Now, first thing you're going to ask is why spinach extract? Why didn't they just test on spinach? Well, spinach has a lot of goodies in it, and we'll talk about some of those really cool things, including ectosteroids and thylakoids. I probably, many of you have never even heard of either, but some of you may have. Uh, 
So I'll, I'll jump into those in a second, but these are phytonutrients found specifically in the plant in spinach. Now, when you look at dietary patterns of say a gorilla, and look, we do not have the digestive tract of a gorilla, their digestive tract is different. I'm not comparing human digestion to, uh, to uh, an animal, but what I'm saying is just in reference, the amount of greens they would eat, 40 pounds of greens, is something that human beings couldn't comfortably do in a daytime. But I think that if we were majorly plant-based, like we were in the wild eating plants, remember plants are very low in calories, but high in nutrient density. By eating a lot of them, we'd give ourselves a very nutrient-rich diet, but we'd have to eat a lot of plants to get the uh, caloric effects that we need or try to get them from nuts or fruits or or grains or other things that have more calorie dense foods, especially uh, tubers uh, found that uh, uh, when we're studying the uh, ancient peoples, ancient humans, that they were really big on digging up roots because roots have very concentrated caloric and like starch, very complex carbohydrates that were uh, lasting and provided more uh, uh, caloric content than the greens, but dominantly uh, ancient human beings were eating greens all day long. So typically a person in modern society, like a standard American diet, maybe you have uh, one green salad in it a day. That's quite a difference, especially when you look back at the archeological records of the fossilized human poop. Um, they looked at them and they found they, they were consuming up to 200 grams of fiber. That means they were eating pretty much greens, grasses, leaves, all the dark greens that were available and were abundantly growing everywhere because they lived in tropical climates. Uh, they were eating tons of fiber and that was preserved there in the fossilized human poop. And we can see that by looking at those, uh, they're called capillites or fossilized human poop. So 200 grams of fiber, do you realize how many greens they were eating in a single day? Well, that's why when we look at supplementation studies, what they're doing is trying to take a whole lot of greens and concentrate it down into something more consumable for modern day society to try to see if those profound effects by higher levels of those micronutrients and those um, phytonutrients. These are plant specific nutrients that aren't just vitamins and minerals. Um, so let's jump into what uh, a couple of those nutrients are. So remember the findings of the main findings of the study, and I'll quote directly from the study here, the main findings showed significant improvements in muscle strength, in muscle quality. This is really important. So that's the actual health of the muscle, as well as a reduction in fat mass and increased muscle mass. So they were all the gains that you're looking for. You want increased strength, increased muscle size, and reduced body fat. All of it was there, uh, and including muscle mass. So they, on average, gained 1.3 pounds of muscle while losing one pound of body fat. Now, usually when you lose weight, you tend to lose a little muscle in the process too from calorie restriction, which is what bodybuilders normally consume. They build up a lot of muscle because they know they're gonna lose a little bit when they diet down because that uh, is uh, energy conservation mechanism built into the human body. So they actually gained muscle while losing body fat at the same time. So this is a big change in body composition. So when you can move the needle instead of losing body fat and losing muscle, which is what dieting normally does, or if you work out, you actually gain muscle, but your body tends to hold on a little bit more fat because you're burning more energy. This actually showed the opposite, that bigger definition. So your muscles will show up better, your muscle gains will be more efficient, and your body becomes more efficient at utilizing and using the nutrients as well as the macronutrients, the carbs, protein, and fats that your body is intaking through the diet. So this is really important that there was a nice body composition, not just muscle gains, 
while gaining body fat or by increasing caloric level. Um, so what were some of the mechanisms? So the first one I want to talk about is called uh, phytoectysteroid. So you heard the last part of that term, which is steroid, which is the plant's version of testosterone, kind of, so to speak. It is a steroidal hormone, but it is only found in plants. It is not the same as human beings. It does not act like a steroid. Now, it does do something interesting. So it doesn't have a direct effect on our hormones, but it kind of acts a little bit as if it were a plant hormone supporting the body's ability to both gain muscle and lose fat. Now, here's, here's what they've shown. Um, so the original study is done on, uh, it's called 20-hydroxyectosterone um, or ectosome. So this 20 OE, well, let's just call it so I don't have to do that mouthful, uh, uh, 20 HE rather, hydroxy ectosome. Um, 20 HE actually increases muscle protein synthesis. Now this is similar to what steroids or, or our testosterone does in humans is it accelerates the body's ability to build muscle, meaning anabolic, right? So this is how a plant sterone or steroid can actually come into the body and not have steroidal effects, but still impart anabolic effects that's muscle growth effects without disturbing or uh, changing our actual hormone levels. Our testosterone or estrogens don't change because of this. It just increases muscle protein synthesis. So uh, quote directly from the study, ectosteroids have a protein synthesis effect and influence on lipid and carbohydrate metabolism. So best of both worlds, they're not only having an anabolic effect of creating muscle protein synthesis, that's your body's ability to take protein in through your diet and convert it into real muscle. So that's muscle protein synthesis going up and the body's ability to utilize carbohydrates and lipids, fats, so for energy. So it makes it a more energy efficient process, meaning that carbohydrates and fats don't get stored as much as body fat. So this is how it can you can drop body fat while gaining muscle at the same time. Really cool and that it's in spinach. But again, you would have to consume a lot of spinach. So they did typical, say you have a spinach salad, you would get so many, you know, micrograms of uh, ectosterone 20, um, 20 HE in there but it would be too small unless you were eating basically that spinach all day long, bowls and bowls and bowls of salad. So that's why the supplementation can do is concentrate all those bowls of salad. Yeah, just think of it like when you steam spinach, <laughs> it turns in from a mountain of spinach and it boils down to about a fifth size of spinach. Basically, that's what the concentration is doing is taking that and concentrating it so that some of these actives that way back when, when we were out in the wild consuming plants all day long, we would be getting these benefits and it would be health benefits, maximizing the efficiency of turning our protein into actual muscle tissue and maximizing our body's ability to utilize carbs and fats for energy so that it don't get stored. This is the efficiency process. You want to get the most efficient quality out of your foods, make more of the protein that you eat turn to muscle, make more of the carbs and fats that you eat actually get burned and used for energy. That's efficiency. So efficiency far more important than just consumption of those macronutrients, fats, carbs, and proteins and fiber. More importantly is how efficient they are on these phytochemicals, these these chemicals that are found in plants, especially dark green plants, can help the body be more efficient, meaning increase muscle protein synthesis and lower stored body fat. Gaining muscle, burning fat, even over the age of 50 in the study. That's what makes this study really remarkable. So one of the other things, the next thing they talk about is the dietary nitrate. So nitrates are found in dark greens and spinach very high in nitrates. It's a great source of nitrates. And some people think, oh, nitrates, that's a, that's a chemical that can be dangerous and form nitrosamines in the stomach. No, 
plant-based nitrates don't do that because nitrates in plants are actually bound to antioxidants and this prevents them from turning into nitrosamines which are actually cancer causing so these are the good nitrates it's chemical nitrates that man put on say bacon or stuff like this these are free nitrates not bound to an antioxidant that prevents that oxidation from happening prevents it from becoming a nitrosamine that's when you get the cancer causing effects that you see when people consume bacon or nitrate treated chemically nitrate treated uh, meat products all right so difference between animal nitrates and plant nitrates big time one promotes health increases nitric oxide production which actually lowers blood pressure increases strength gains and stuff like this so right quote from the study the beneficial effects of nitrate on muscle contractility that's the body's ability to contract the muscle you can squeeze down or torque at a much stronger degree by having higher dietary nitrates in the body and muscle efficiency as well as improving muscle endurance during weight lift weightlifting exercise in healthy adults so healthy adults using weights and consuming a high amounts of greens are going to get lots of beneficial effects from consuming high amounts of greens but again it's a high amount of greens so how can you get that higher amount of greens in well one way is to eat big salads big greens uh spinach salads or to steam it so it contracts down and then you can get it you can also get uh, chopped spinach frozen and it will cook down too as well so that way you can eat a little bit higher quantity without filling up the stomach so much um, juicing it too can but uh, as you juice uh, the spinach you can lose some of the benefits especially the fiber uh, that's in it too but one of my favorite ways is just actually to add um, frozen spinach into a cacao smoothie now it's really interesting because spinach has a very complementary flavor profile with cacao or chocolate so when you put that cacao and spinach together, they combine to form a really rich tasting cacao flavor. Uh, obviously, you can throw a couple of dates in there for sweetener or some stevia if you want to keep it low cow. And you can have an amazing spinach cacao smoothie. Obviously, you can throw a scoop of clean green protein in there and get even more phytonutrients, more polyphenols, more uh, vitamins and minerals, as well as 20 grams of protein in there, too. That's a great smoothie. That's one of my favorite smoothies. Uh, just putting in a, a banana, a frozen banana, uh, a scoop or two of uh, cacao, some frozen spinach, blend it all together and with a scoop of clean green protein and you've got an amazing nutrition and protein and fiber packed uh, way to do a nice uh, post-workout smoothie. All right, so the last thing we want to look at that is really unique to spinach is an ingredient called uh, a phytonutrient called thylakoids. Um, thylakoids, I'm going to go ahead and put this thylakoid study on there because it's really impressive. If you have issues with late night snacking you're gonna you're gonna love this one hang on just a second let me get it up here post okay uh let me uh, just uh respond to raymond's question here uh, in the study uh, put it up on the screen so everybody else can see it in the study uh what other foods did they eat vegetarian or animal foods yes uh, they consumed a standard, their diets didn't change. Uh, the, uh, the, what they consumed was not, uh, was observed and tracked so that their caloric intake and their macronutrient intake were similar. So that was not, uh, uh, uh influencing the outcomes. Um, but, uh, they were eating basically, uh, you know, the standard American diet. Um, so the big, the only difference is they both were exercising. They were both consuming a, roughly the same macronutrients uh, in their profile, um, mix of, of plant and animal foods. The only difference was the spinach extract, and it was a significant outcome. All of the results were significant: strength gains, muscle gains, muscle quality, uh, even reducing um, some uh, inflammation markers too. Um, 
So let's put this thylakoid study up on the screen. This is pretty amazing. Um, so uh, I'm also putting up uh, not only the title of the study and the link, but also the results of the study, which are pretty mind blowing. So thylakoids are found in the outside cell of the uh, chloroplasts in the greens part of spinach. Um, when these are chewed, when we blend them or chew them, uh, we break apart and break open these thylakoids. Now, once again, it took five grams of this spinach extract. So a big quantity for uh, a supplement as, as far as supplements is concerned. So you're using a lot of this. And again, this is more uh, similar to the ancient humans who were out there eating tons of greens a day. So the more big greens you can get into your body on a regular basis. That's why I you know, created clean green protein to help people start their day out every morning with a nice berry and, and clean green protein smoothie that gives you a lot of densely uh, uh, packed green plant nutrition, like eating like two giant bowls of spinach in, in just a simple smoothie that anybody can chug down in, uh, in 20, 30 minutes. So this is this is one of the important things that we're talking pretty decent quantities because this was based on assumptions that human beings were eating a lot but here's the interesting part of the study that they uh overweight women consuming five grams of the spinach extract which was really high in thylakoids for three months demonstrated hedonic hunger let me explain that hedonic hunger hunger is hunger for junk food, hunger for chips and candy and stuff like that. So it's it's those cravings, basically. But it reduced those cravings by 95%. Now, we've seen this in, in several other of the studies. When people eat these big salads, it really reduces cravings for other sweets and candies and chocolates and other of these goodies that are high caloric content. And this is one of the ways that people can lose weight. And sure enough, they did. In three months, they had 43% greater weight loss compared to the placebo. Just the spinach extract. That's it. That's amazing. A 95% reduction in food cravings. So very specific food cravings, too. You're talking about the worst kind of food cravings, the cravings for bad food, for junk food, for fried food, for sweets, for isolated foods and stuff like this. So this is the kind of, you know, I've done eating my dinner, but I'm just starting to have those cravings. And this is when we load up on the sweets or the typical desserts in the standard American diet right after food. And this is... Um, a mechanism that I believe when you put in that high nutrient density, the body says, we're good. Don't need any more food. We get all the nutrients we need for the following day. You're good to go. Let's cut off the food intake right here. So having a big green, uh, dark green salad, uh, especially with spinach in it, high in thylakoids, can be a great way to help you reduce those cravings and get yourself into uh, better fat loss. So really cool study um, showing amazing results, both with the uh, phytonutrients, the phytoectosteroids, the 20 uh, hydroxy uh, ectosome, the nitrates in it, and finally the thylakoid. So three to four different mechanisms of action actually supporting each other, all found in particularly high amounts in spinach. Spinach, really high in nitrates. Spinach, one of the highest of all in uh, 20 uh, hydroxy ectosomes or ectosteroids. And the highest that I know of, of thylakoids. So suppressing appetite, um, accelerating the body's ability to utilize fats and carbohydrates and increasing your body's ability to take the protein you eat and turn it into muscle. These are all the things we want. So including spinach or dark greens like clean green protein in a regular basis, especially around protein foods. So if you're eating a high protein food, throwing a spinach salad in there can help.
So I hope this is some uh, good stuff for you. I hope these are some practical elements. Spinach salads, uh, steamed spinach to get more concentrated amounts in there, and blending it into smoothies when you make smoothies, both pre and post workout, and combining it with some protein like clean green protein, and you're going to get better results. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you do like it, give it a thumbs up and be sure to share so we can get this information out to more people. Let's get, get America healthy, fit, and lean. All right, let's do this. Thanks everyone for joining me. We'll be back next week with some more great research. Nice little study that, uh, well, you'll have to wait and see it next week. All right, talk to you soon.